what's up y'all i don't really want shit to be honest with you um i told myself this year moving forward in my content creating journey that i'm going to just go ahead and turn the camera on and give what i can give um most of the time there will be a purpose you know to the videos i i, I try my best to think of topics um i look up what's going on you know trending controversial conversation pieces you know um but lately i've just been in my personal bag and just giving my thoughts and opinions sharing my own experiences um, there are a few things uh, that, you know, have been going on in the celebrity entertainment world. Um, a lot of things has been going on politically, you know, religiously, all the things, um, real, real, you know, topics that we're all familiar with. Um, something just recently came out about Sandra Bullock child stealing um, the black child that she has now. That's, you know, allegedly. And apparently the receipts are receding so that's definitely something that we're going to have a conversation about at some point um i just got to get it all together i am trying to go live this weekend um because there are just a lot of things that you know and i, I want y'all to be at the table with me as we're having the conversation so we're definitely going to get into a live this week i'm going to do my absolute best <sighs> The month of April is coming up. I talked about a cleanse that I wanted to do in a couple videos ago, right? Um, I've made promises like that to myself in the past, but I really want to stick with it. And when I mean cleanse, I'm not just talking about eating better. I'm talking about just no more masturbation, no sex. Um, <clears throat> just working out, eating healthy. And I, I, I kind of want to call it a fast, too, because <clears throat> I do feel like if there's something that you want, right, and we, we want to talk about manifestation and things of that nature, I do feel like you have to call on the universe, um, put it in your mind's eye, constantly think about it, build towards it, um, all of the, the things, right, to, to properly manifest. But I do believe that sometimes there's a sacrifice component to that. Um, a lot of people would, you know, put it in terms of how, you know, church people do by fasting because they want the blessing. If that's how you want to look at it and that, that brings you some type of comfort, do your thing. Um, but for me, it means, you know, exactly how I'm explaining it to you guys. I do feel as if... Um, Maybe if I'm able to put down the cigarettes, put down the sex, put down, you know, bad foods and, and, and really just focus and grind and have that be what I want, my desire, be the thing that I'm working for. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, the universe will see that and bless me. Either way, I'm going to still get something out of that. Does that make sense? A lot of us look for the blessing instead of the work and the, the progress that we've made during the work. You know, eventually, I noticed too, some people, even the good ones, <laughs> hello God, as the, the, the focus, the intention is the blessing, they realize on the journey, they forgot all about the reward of it all. Because they realize the real reward is in realizing that you did this you accomplished this even though you've yet to attain what it is that you you know we're thinking you were going to get at the end of it like fuck the prize it's about the process and that's also what establishes you establishes you as a wise person is realizing that this thing called life the process is important and knowing just like I um, I just told my nephew about the uh, the secret, you know, the power of um, what is it? Intention and all that shit. Right. Um, or what is it? The power of what is that? Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to say the power of intention. I know there's another word for it. Um, walking. As you drive in the dark with your headlights on. 
So when you're walking your journey, a lot of us fuck up because we're too busy worried about 10 years from now. But if we treat life and the journey of life like we do when we're driving a car in the dark with our headlights on, let us just look as far, let's seek as far, let's march as far as the light, hello God, is showing. When you go past the light and into the unknown, the darkness, the confusion, your road starts to get filled, hello God, <clears throat> with obstacles, because you can't see. So I, I just, you know, there's a lot of things that I want. There's a lot of things that I need, require, and desire that would make me somewhat of a satisfied human being. And as a, as a human, as a working human, hello God, it is, uh, I really would like to know like, what are we doing here? Like, what is the purpose? I know there's more to this life than just a bunch of working ass motherfuckers, confused, stressed, depressed, deprived. You know, like what what's the what's the purpose? Like you can't tell me that it's girl, you're just going to work for 80 years. You know? You're going to work for 80 fucking years. You're going to slave. You're going to you're going to go through bouts of, you know, <laughs> messed up emotions, feelings, you know, because of the the stress that, you know, the owners of the world put us through hundreds of years have gone by and we're still doing the same shit working towards what most of the people you talk to i just want financial freedom like is that really a, is that really something that's purposeful you know is that a purpose or is that just because society has deprived us of so much that we we have to look i saw some girl let's talk about this this kind of relates i saw the girl on tiktok talk about how our definition of luxury is no longer a vacation is no longer the handbag it's no longer the car that you want it's no longer you know the big fancy house the luxury is being able to have a full cart of groceries the luxury is being able to fill up your tank on a week. It's not a paid week, okay? Hello. The luxury is being able to pay your, your light bill, your phone bill, your bills in full. When they are due without a payment arrangement, bitch. Can we talk about it? So I ask again, what's it all for? Please tell me. Oh, wrong one. What's it all for? I'd really appreciate some type of explanation. And I don't think anybody in this materialistic, greedy ass, fraudulent ass world will be able to tell me. We have truly, we, we wonder why the spirit is fucked. The human spirit is fucked is because the human spirit has been duped it's been dried out and laid to pasture and told that you are only as good as your productivity for the next man, for the next governmental entity. You're only as good as the handbag and the wallet that you that you have, the designer label that's on it. You're only as good. I think all these kids, all they give a fuck about is nice shit. They look around, they see everybody else with nice shit and they see what happens to the people who don't have nice shit. They get shunned, they get talked about, they get bullied, ostracized from their communities because they're not keeping up with the Joneses. We got a generation of kids, even my generation, the ones before us, they work to the bone. Work, 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 work. Hello, work, 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 work. Nobody has dreams anymore, you can't have them. You have goals, but you don't have any dreams. You, you're, you're not given the room, the resources, the space, the honor of being able to dwell in the world of dreams. And when you ask people what the dream is, again, they'll always respond, 
I want to be financially free. I want to take care of my family. I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z. I want to step outside of my normal broke shit. And then what else has happened is how your, your field of dreams has been burned. Hello, God. They don't want you to. They don't want you to be happy. They want you to be sad. They want you to be mad. They want you to be depressed and sick. Because if you're truly happy, if you're living in bliss, hello, God, <clears throat> you, you know, you've, you've realized that you're no longer beholden to a system. You know, I was watching, I loved nature documentaries. And again, shout out to Angela Bassett because uh, insects were um, one of the titles for the documentary, the Queen's documentary on Disney Plus. And I was watching these ants. They lived their entire life for the Queen. Usually when the Queen dies, they all die or they move on if there's another Queen that they can serve. Their whole mission every day is to take care of the queen's eggs, feed the queen, build the forts, build the communities, but everything at the end of the day is for the queen. They don't have a life outside of their own. They don't even have a thought process outside of their own because just like bees, it's, it's a hive mind type of vibe. From birth, that is their mission. That is their desire is to please the queen. I'm sorry, I can't be one of those people. <laughs> I can't be one of those people, girl. That's crazy. They know nothing else because again, from birth, they know what their purpose is to serve the queen. It's crazy. I feel like that's the world that we live in. Our purpose is to serve these earthly masters as your Bible tells us, hello God, as y'all's Bibles tells us, it's our job to obey our earthly masters. They don't want us to think for ourselves. They don't want us to have our own money. They don't, they don't want us to have our own access. They don't want us to ever understand, feel the breeze. Hello God, they don't ever want us to take that time to see the other side of struggle, which is peace and happiness and joy and glee. Worry free. There's no doubt. There's no fear, really. You're just living, girl. You're enjoying yourself in this life experience as a human being. That to them is a problem because you're not being a slave. They don't, again, why do you think they're, they're doing their best to lock down TikTok? Why do you think they're doing their best to sit here and tax you on your side businesses? Why do you think they're trying to make side hustles illegal? They want to restrict every day working Americans access to be able to be financially free and independent because you can now walk your own path. And if millions of us were able to have our own income that was not relying on the government, we did not need to go into that nine to five, the economy would tank within a day. Why do you think that they're sitting around having conversations about why American birth rates are the lowest of the low? They are mad that we are not out here sitting around here producing the next generation for their workforce. They don't care about us not having kids on other than the fact that, girl, we need more foot soldiers. We need more workers. How do you expect the American people to even think about wanting children <clears throat> when poverty is a thing? Why? So you can get everybody hooked up on another generation hooked on government assistance. We see that that's not even enough right now. None of it is enough. But you want people to think about procreation. You want people to think about having kids and raise kids. You know how expensive it is to raise kids? Oh my fucking God. People always pull up on me when I do a video though. It's too expensive. Y'all be, and we be sitting around here looking like boo boo the fool down to the damn government cheese building and shit trying to figure out a goddamn way to make it and all y'all motherfuckers do is sit around here and okay we're gonna go with it like stop we need to stop being sheeps to the slaughter we need to finally stand up against these tyrants and we need to take our country back 
because this is our country. Our ancestors built every single thing. If it was not for, hello God, our ancestors and the indigenous peoples of this land, there would be no America. There'd be no infrastructure. There'd be no inventions. There'd be nothing. There, there would be nothing. It's just really sad to see the trajectory in which we're going, where we're headed. Because, girl, it's very real. Y'all think it's crazy? Is it, huh? Look at all the videos. Get on TikTok. Watch all those videos. People complaining about everything. People, the, 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 the pressure cooker has almost done its fucking job, bitch. Damn. The pressure cooker has almost done its job. We're getting to that point where there may be a revolution, honey. Something has to be done to right these wrongs. Because I'm tired. I'm tired as an American. I'm tired as an African American. I'm tired as a human being. I'm just over the blatant disrespect towards us. We just don't have a chance right now. We have never had a chance. They give us sprinkles of hope just to keep us going. But other than that, they don't give a damn. They don't give not one fuck. I'm just tired of living in an unjust society and the uh, the continued mistreatment of our black and brown folks just continues to I want to say this if that's something that's never remedied I'm like Miss Seely girl. I put a curse on you and until you do right by me and my folks, like, I just feel like nothing is ever going to be peaceful. That's just really how I feel. Let's just, I, I, it's the truth that that's really how I feel. There will be no peace. There will be no peace. Actually, you know what? Let me put it this way. Y'all want to play around? There will be none. No peace at all. You ever notice that? Like nothing until there is some type of recompense. There's always going to be some type of unrest. And I want to say this too. I want to let law enforcement know that at some point or another, you're going to have no choice. <laughs> but to address the way you all have trained your law enforcement, because I have no doubt in my mind, this is a systemic issue, which lets me, and, and this is continued behavior. We see in all of the reports filed that the officer, the sergeant, the chief or whoever, the police commissioner, the officer was justified in how he handled this situation, knowing clearly, if we're all watching the same body cam footage, you can clearly tell, girl, that this is a, an abuse of power. You can clearly tell that you made this specific stop or you harassed this, because it's harassment, when you just walk up on people without any clear cause, without any real understanding, you're on fishing expeditions, you're approaching situations with clear, biased intent you are racist in nature so naturally you are going to sit around and not just profile but you're going to exercise what you feel your rights are what your what, what the power is given to you by the people you're bold in the road but your drunk ass will get ran over at some point yeah better leave that Budweiser alone bitch because y'all be bold as fuck in the road and get your ass ran over and be wanting to holler. Don't holler. 
Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and walk. Don't drink and fly. Don't drink and be do anything with the public. Because, bitch, huh? y'all be sitting here crying trying to play victim. But your inebriation got your ass laid out to pasture, bitch. And I'm not going to feel sorry for you. I'm sick of these drunk ass fucking Mexicans, girl. Like, I know I sound like some pig, but it's the truth, girl. I'm sick of it. Do you know, on a daily, I don't talk about this much, but I almost run over. Or a drunk bitch when I'm taking my nephew to school in the mornings. You can just see the puffy red fucking face of these guys. Two hours of sleep, but not even sleep sometimes. You can just tell. They'll go to work drunk and they'll, they'll wreak havoc on, in their wake in the morning. I see it all the fucking time. I'm sick of that shit. But I understand, girl. It's a, it's a heart, not life. So drinking seems to numb the pain. But girl, please, when your culture is identified as some boozing ass, Budweiser, Heineken chasing ass, Modelo drinking motherfuckers, that's a problem. That's a pro Stella, Estella, whatever the fuck that shit is, girl. Y'all really hate when we single y'all out. Of that's what y'all are known for being some drunk ass bitches. And I know black folks, we ain't that good for either, girl. We're associated with things like Hennessy and Remy, bitch. I hate that too, but girl, we, we did it to ourselves, girl. Fried chicken, watermelon, we have all that. We did it to ourselves. And hey, girl, ain't nothing wrong with that because I love me some fried chicken and watermelon, bitch. I can't fuck with Hennessy, though. But yeah, I just, you know, it's all about what is it, what, what is it all for? I just... I highly doubt like this is <laughs> this was part of the grand design paying to live that's a crime against humanity in itself girl I can't do shit until your big ass moves nigga I'm sorry I can't see the other opposite way of traffic or none of that. I'm not even gonna try I'm not gonna get into an accident playing these motherfucking Raideneer games with y'all niggas bro but yeah child just things to think about because I'm tired of growing I'm tired of being in a world that there's just so many there's more problems there's more chaos and confusion and worried and there is people that are happy and I think that the fact that that's not being addressed is one of the is, is the main reason the government if y'all are gonna let us do this to you we're going to continue to do this to you until you rise the fuck up. Just like I talked about with the story of um <clears throat> the Pharaoh and Moses. He was willing to let the people go. Not once, not twice, but three times. But God hardened the Pharaoh's heart on every occasion because he wanted to force the slaves to realize their power. They wanted to he wanted to force the slaves to fight back to get a spine. He wanted to teach them a lesson. And the same could be said about what's going on today. The tyrants, their hearts have been hardened and we have done nothing. We have done absolutely nothing. To take back our power and to show these old, decrepit, chicken neck ass bitches that we're not going to take it no more. Think about the, the life that was left for us. Do we want to leave? And it's worse now. It's even worse. The life now is worse, bitch. It's worse now. So we're leaving worse for our children. That's the reality and the fact that no one does what they can to really, you know it, you know the facts, you know the tea, you experience it all, but instead none of us are doing what's needed, required, and desired to change the, the trajectory of the human experience. That's why there's a lot of doom and gloom and sadness because no one, especially this generation, it's hard to experience peace, freedom. Being able to truly live instead of just exist in this life. And like I said, things that are continuous and they're, they're a problem for the human experience and we all talk about these same topics and it's brought up 
you know, in public assembly and things of that nature, if that has never changed, that just lets you know that the people that sit in these spaces that we vote in, they don't care about us. And I'm not, I don't want to want to go down this road again. I just did a video having this similar conversation, but girl, that's sad. It's really sad. And when you think about the things that people choose to prioritize over the well-being, the equal treatment of a human life, girl, that's y'all ain't y'all. If y'all are thinking about that, if y'all have, you know, <laughs> had that run through your mind, God bless you. But I don't think people really think they, they don't think about the the seriousness of that. Ooh, this kid is not having it, honey. He's having a temper tantrum. Um, he might be part of the spectrum, and I think that's why. So hopefully his parents communicate good with him. Yeah, he's having a temper tantrum. Grandma's not with it. But she's dealing with him, though. That's good. Um, we had a boy at my uh, job who... Um, had uh he was on the spectrum and i walked in during a shift change once and just the way that some of the employees were my co-workers were communicating with him they were doing their best i'm, I'm not gonna say that they were mean or anything but they did i don't think they understood so i had to step in and because I have experience, hello God, because I have worked in this field for damn near 10 years, actually, <laughs> um, I know how to deal, you know? So I, I had to step in and, you know, they were like, wow, how did you, you know, like, it's experience, brother. Like, y'all, <clears throat> you gotta, you gotta, and sometimes, it's not even just that. What is what is your soul about? What is your heart about, bitch? Hello. Sometimes you don't need professional training on how to deal with the humans, bitch. I don't know about the spectrum like that. I don't know about autism like that. I don't know about a lot of special needs like that. But what I do know is human. Hello. <laughs> I know how to talk to people. I know how to empathize with people. I know exactly how to calm a chaotic soul because I once was a chaotic soul. And they're like, man, thank you. You know, and I gave them some tips and pointers. If you have guys have any questions on how to deal with particular clients that have certain, you know, special needs and, and you're not, a lot of times I think people are just happy to have a job. They, you know, either lie on their resume or sometimes we do hire people that don't have any real experience like that. But that's where training and seminars and, you know, educating them properly on how to deal with specific um, groups of kids. Because um, we got different walks of life, child, you know. Uh, so you, you got to be mindful of how you deal with them. And um, like, oh, thank you. You know, you know, if we have any more questions, we'll come to you. And, you know, yeah, like there's very few of us here that are trained and again, that have that way. Bitch, I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi, okay? Hello, God. I have to teach y'all the ways of the Force, bitch, okay? Because if you leave it up to certain individuals, you might end up adding more trauma onto that, onto that child. I recognize it all. Um, and the only way I would have known how to deal with that too, I've been in it before. You know, and when I was first introduced to kids on the spectrum, it was on the hills of some goddamn, some very weird, erratic ass shit. And I was new to that. I had never experienced that before, but that, I experienced that when I was a bus driver years ago for the school district. So when I had realized, you know, that I made it my business, I didn't understand, I didn't know, but I was not about to sit here and judge. I was not about to sit here and, you know, I, t I asked, I did research and then being more around kids with special needs, you realize, you know, 
how to deal with it. Um, God bless, though. Uh, as a parent, a parent of someone with special needs, a caregiver, whatever, I can only imagine, you know. Um, God bless you and um, all of the things. Hmm. I have a deeper thought about certain things, but I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go with this one. Um, might give y'all a break from videos. I've been pushing them out, but if it's on my heart, if I want to talk about it, you best believe it's going to be on the feed. Okay. I appreciate y'all getting to all my videos, like, comment, subscribe, share all the things, engage in the content. I really do appreciate you guys. And yeah, until next time. Again, be blessed and never stressed. Remember to help is truly wealth. Take care. Bye.